英語会話。Hello everyone, welcome to our English conversation program. How are you? We hope you're fine. Since this is the first Saturday, Wen and I are very delighted to invite you to join us for the guest hour. Absolutely. And the guest for this month is Professor Nobuyuki Yuasa of Hiroshima University, who is one of Japan's top professors of English and English literature. We are very happy to have you on this program, Professor Yuasa. It's a great pleasure for me to be with you, Mr. Togo. Thank you. We are very excited to be able to broadcast this interview straight from Hiroshima, which is known to everybody for being the site of the unforgettable tragedy during the war. Well, Professor Yuasa, may I ask how you came to live Hiroshima? Yes, I was born in Tokyo and lived in different parts of the city till I was 13.、Uh-huh. I left Tokyo in the last year of the war in 1945 and began to live in this part of Japan.、Mm. I was attending middle school in Miyoshi, a city in the northern part of this prefecture, when the atom bomb was dropped here.、Ah. I saw a big flash going across the sky on a clear August day, but too far away to hear any noise.、Uh-huh, yes. So I was not directly involved in the tragedy myself. But I saw some of its effects because I had to look after my relatives、mm-hmm. who were seriously injured by the bomb. Oh, really? Oh, too bad. I moved into Hiroshima City in 1948 and have lived here ever since, except for brief intervals. You know, I'm very curious to know how you came into contact with English for the first time, Professor.、Um, I would assume it was during the war when English, in fact, was regarded as the language of the enemy country, wasn't it? That's right. Uh, my father was a teacher of English. He gave me my first introduction to the language and、uh, encouraged me in every way to study it, even through the years when it was regarded as a language of the enemy. Oh, really? Yes.、Mm-hmm. Besides, I was lucky enough to have good teachers in the schools I attended.、Mm-hmm. I should like to mention especially、uh, Mr. Ishibashi. Oh, he's not familiar with his name. He's very yes, well known. Uh, 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 who later became a professor of English at Tokyo、uh, University of Education. Is, is he still alive now?、Uh, I'm sorry,、uh, he died some years ago.、Uh-huh. Uh, he taught me oral English when I was a student at the attached middle school. Believe it or not, he did not speak a word of Japanese in his class for a whole year. Good、oh. gracious.、Mm-hmm. And、uh, this was when Tokyo was under severe attack. By the B 29s.、Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And、uh, may I ask,、uh, Professor, how then you studied English after the war? Well, after the war, I came into direct contact with native speakers. Oh,、mm-hmm. you were lucky. Especially、uh, young American missionaries who came to assist in the reconstruction of the city. That's why I see so many、uh, churches around in Hiroshima.、Mm-hmm. Well, Hiroshima is a sacred city, you know. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> I attended their Bible classes and often helped them as an interpreter. Ah,、uh-huh. I see. Let me give a word of advice here to everyone who wants to study English. You must not expect to learn it simply by listening to it or even by imitating your teacher like a parrot.、Oh, I agree with you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You must, on your own initiative, think in it and act through it.、Mm-hmm. I think this is what I did、uh, during the years after the war. You know, I absolutely agree, Professor. And、um, I feel sure that our listeners are probably wondering how you became interested in the study of English literature. My interest in, li- in English literature developed very slowly. In fact,、uh, I don't know when I made the choice of studying it for my profession.、Mm-hmm. I was very fond of poetry as a boy. I used to read the works of Tosson and other modern Japanese poets.、Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I was interested in mathematics and theoretical physics. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, for a long time, I was torn between the charm of imaginative dreaming and the beauty of abstract thinking. But do you see any connection between mathematics and poetry, I wonder? <laughs> well, I think they are very,、uh, both very beautiful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, Professor Yuasa,、um, 
it seems to me that it may be rather easy uh, to go abroad for study uh, these days, as there are a lot of opportunities available for the students of English. But in those days, uh, the situation was quite different. I, I would assume. So,、uh, could I ask how you、uh, managed to go to America and also England for further study? Yes, I went to the United States in 1954. On a Fulbright scholarship,、hmm. and to Great Britain in 1965、uh, on a British Council scholarship. Ah, yes. I had to take a very difficult examination for each of these scholarships,、mm-hmm. <laughs> and I feel I was simply lucky in hitting the jackpot in either case. Oh, I think it's more like hard work than luck, actually, Professor.、Um, that's really very exciting. What did you study in in both countries, and which universities did you attend? In America, I studied. At the、uh, University of California in Berkeley.、Mm-hmm. In England, I studied at both London University and Cambridge University. Oh, wonderful! In America, I worked for a master's degree, so I had to do a wide range of reading. In fact, practically every author from Chaucer to T.S. Eliot, Eliot was included in the list of authors I had to study for my final examination. Good gracious! Frankly, I was driven to despair, but soon I found myself concentrating on the authors I liked.、Mm-hmm. There are Chaucer, Spencer, and John Donne. Oh, you know, Chaucer is such a difficult language. I mean, even、um, a native speaker can't understand the very old English of Chaucer. Yes, but I was lucky enough to have Professor Charles Muscatine to help me understand Chaucer.、Uh-huh, yes. He read Chaucer beautifully.、Mm. I also had、uh, Professor Josephine Miles. To teach me how to appreciate the styles of Spencer and Dunn through vocabulary analysis. Ah,、oh, yes. In England, I had a rather specialised research project to undertake.、Mm-hmm. Under the guidance of Professor Rosemary Freeman, I tried to establish a connection between the allegorical figures in Spencer and the similar allegorical figures in English emblem books. Yes, that's right. Well, Professor Yuasa,、uh, I don't think there are so many people who have、uh, had an opportunity to study English and English li-、uh, literature in two、uh, major countries. I mean, the United States and the Great Britain.、Um, what are some of the most basic differences? I wonder in the attitude of studying、uh, either, say, language or literature.、Uh, Any comments?、Uh, in answering this question,、uh, I must warn the listeners about the danger of generalization.、Mm-hmm. There are many different kinds of universities and colleges, both in England and America, and the approach varies from one type of institution to another. Yes, that's very true. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. However, I was impressed by the democratic spirit of American universities. And by the personal attention every student gets in British universities, I can see that.、Mm-hmm. <laughs> In America, you feel all the doors are open, and even if you don't know much about the subject you are studying,、uh, you don't have to feel terribly ashamed, because your instructors will offer you every possible help.、Mm-hmm. But、uh, in England, you must work with a tutor. And your personal relationship with him is very important. Yes, it's a one-to-one basis,、That's、really,、right. isn't it?、Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, whether you benefit from your university education or not depends a lot on、uh, how much you can derive from your tutor,、mm. and in a sense, you must wrestle with him. Intellectual wrestling, you mean? That's right. <laughs> I think this tradition、uh, goes back to the uh, uh, medieval uh, tradition of disputation. Yes. I think it's a good custom, uh, but. Uh, It can be hard on Japanese students who are not accustomed to learning in this way. Oh, you know, I agree with you because、um, I think students in Japan. I don't know whether you agree with me, Professor, but students in Japan aren't encouraged to be so active in the their lectures, and they're more passive. They have more of a passive role. I think your impression is quite correct.、Mm-hmm. And when you are asked to be rather original, aggressive when you go abroad, it must be rather difficult. I think that's right,、mm-hmm. uh, Professor. You also may I just ask you one question about、uh, uh, the term you used、uh, now and. A tutor, or sometimes I, I I hear people talking about a tutorial group. And、uh, what are the、uh, 
uh, counterparts uh, in in Japanese university uh, system? Well, uh, whether we have uh, exact counterpart uh, in Japanese universities or not, I don't know. But uh, tutor is an academic advisor, uh -huh. uh, one you must work with uh, through your years of uh, academic life. Mm -hmm. And probably the tutorial group is, is, is something like Japanese uh, seminar? Uh, uh, I think it's more than a seminar uh, uh -huh. because uh, you have to present uh, papers uh, to your tutor. Oh, uh -huh. I see. Every time every they time, meet. Every time. Almost, almost every time they, uh, mm -hmm. you meet. That's I right. see. Mm -hmm. So a lot of assignments. Yes, and yes. Involved. And then discussion That's mm -hmm. right. um, on yes. the particular papers yes. that you've um, presented. And for those interested, and I know there are lots of people who are interested in studying either English or English literature abroad in the future, Professor, maybe you could uh, give some advice or practical suggestions that you may think uh, may be helpful to them? Uh, well, this is a difficult question to answer. Uh, all I can say is learn as much as you can before you go. Hmm. You're not likely to benefit very much from a year or two of studying abroad unless you have done a lot of preparation in advance. Ah, that's very interesting. Mm. Get a syllabus, for example, mm -hmm. and make a concrete study plan and establish personal contacts in advance if possible. Mm. And uh, once you get there, of course, uh, forget about your home, <laughs> forget about your national identity. Yeah, I agree, yes. It's difficult to do. Yes, yes very difficult. I'm afraid so. And uh, simply try to act as a member of the academic community you belong to. Mm. Avoid, by all means, uh, forming a ghetto or a closed group with other Japanese students. Ah, uh -huh, your advice is very sound. Well, read uh, Henry James' novels dealing with international situations before you go. <laughs> yes, and uh, uh, you just mentioned, Professor, uh, it might be a good idea to establish a personal relation uh, with someone uh, in the institute, probably a student uh, uh, aiming for, but uh, what do you mean uh, in more specific terms? Uh, well, uh, write to the uh, professors oh, I and see. ask for their advice. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, well, send your papers to them uh -huh. and uh, get your advice on your papers. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So the things have to be done by posting. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what you mean. I yes. see. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Professor Yuasa, uh, I know you are a very, very busy man, so I am not sure if you have any leisure time. Yeah. However, <laughs> if you have any, uh, could I ask you how you, 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 you find yourself uh, doing most of the time? Well, uh, I am a self-appointed Isaac Walton. <laughs> I enjoy fishing up in the mountains in my free hours. Hmm. When I went to America in 1954, I took a bamboo fishing pole with me, oh, and I had a marvelous result with it fishing at the foot of Mount Shasta in California. Oh, beautiful there. Mm. Yes. Six months after I came home, my friends wrote to me saying that they were still eating the trout I had caught. Oh. That's amazing, yes. isn't it? My they have work. kept them frozen, you know. Yes. <laughs> and uh, how, how does a Japanese bamboo, then, a fishing pole, compare with an American one? Well, Japanese bamboo fishing poles are good for... Uh, shallow running waters. Oh, I ah, see. And what were the American people using then? I'm not well, they were using fishing. regular American rods uh, yes. with reels attached to them. Ah. They are good for deep pools, but oh. not for shallow waters. Well, uh, I didn't know uh, that. It's a, a bait fishing. I mean, you use bait. Yes, mm -hmm. we use salmon eggs to catch ah. trout. Oh, ah, wow. It must be delicious, even that's for a, us. Yes, and that's a wonderful relaxing mm -hmm. A hobby, isn't it? Well, Professor Yuasa, I'm afraid time is almost up and we have to uh, stop here. And, and, but I'm sure our listeners are still eager to hear more about your, say, interesting career as a uh, well-known translator of Japanese literature in particular. So uh, could we ask you to come back again to talk to us next week? Yes, I'll be glad to. Well, thank you very much, Professor Yuasa, for being with us, and I hope our listeners enjoyed being with us. That's all for today. Be with us next time. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our English conversation program. We are very delighted to have you with us again for our guest hour. Yes, indeed we are. And the guest for this month is Professor Nobuyuki Yuasa 
of Hiroshima University. That means we are speaking to you from Hiroshima this week again. We hope you will enjoy joining us for the next 15 minutes. Welcome back to our guest hour, everyone. Just for the benefit of those who are unable to listen to the first half of this program, let me quickly brief you on our guest today. Professor Nobuyuki Yuasa is Professor of English and English Literature at Hiroshima University, and he is also a very well-known translator of Japanese literature. Now, Professor Yuasa, may I start off by asking you how you became interested in the translation of Japanese literature, particularly in that of uh, poetry? Well, uh, I got interested in the translation of Japanese literature almost by accident. Accident! How amazing! How was that? Uh, what I mean is, uh, I took it up without thinking much about it. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, when I came home from America in September 1956 with a master's degree, I wanted to do further graduate work at Hiroshima University. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was told to wait till the following April. Ah, really? I spent this unoccupied period translating Issa's Oragaharu. Mm. I sent my manuscript to Professor Josephine Miles of the University of California, and uh, she thought it good enough for publication. Mm -hmm. The book appeared in 1960. I chose Issa partly because he was my favorite poet, mm -hmm. but partly because I thought his robust humor was likely to be appreciated by foreigners. Ah, I see. <laughs> I think I was not wrong in this assumption. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. And Professor Yuasa, in the process of uh, uh, translating Japanese literature into English, uh, do you think your knowledge of English, and, and particularly, I mean, English literature, was of uh, some help to you? Yes, I think you are absolutely right. Mm -hmm. uh, in translating Issa, for example, uh, my knowledge of John Donne and Emily Dickinson was a great help. Do you mean the religious themes in, in both those poets? Uh, not necessarily. What I mean is that they are uh, both witty poets. Oh, I see, mm -hmm. yes. My second translation was uh, Basho's Travel Sketches, which was published by Penguin Books in 1966. In this work, I was inspired by such poets as William Wordsworth, and Robert Frost. Now, in those two, they're both nature poets. That's right. Mm -hmm. And in translating Yokan for Princeton University Press, especially in discussing the tradition of Japanese waka in my introduction, I found my knowledge of Elizabethan court poets, such as Sidney and Spencer, very useful indeed. Ah, yes. Mm -hmm. In fact, I consider a fairly good knowledge of English literature is indispensable if you wish to be a good translator of Japanese literature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I must warn our listeners, though, about the danger of imitating one particular author too much. If you do so, you will end up producing a feeble imitation of an English or American author. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm sure you're right. Could I ask you a little about the study of English literature in, in this country? For instance, in what area do you think the greatest interest lies, or what are your prospective views of the study of English literature um, in Japan, I mean? Well, uh, I think there is uh, much room for improvement in English studies in Japan. Oh, is there? Uh, first of all, I think there is too much emphasis on academic work, mm -hmm. combined with a tendency to specialize too early. Ah, oh, I see, yes. Mm -hmm. This is a great danger uh, to imaginative thinking and intellectual curiosity. Mm -hmm. especially among young scholars. Mm, that's true, isn't it? Uh, second, we must try to raise the level of English among the students of English literature. Mm -hmm. A student who can understand the subtleties of English and express his thoughts and feelings in fluent English is a rare phenomenon indeed. Do you mean because English is such an idiomatic language? Uh, I think so, but... Uh, also, I think that uh, our students are not simply exposed to uh, native English. Oh, I see. Well, a lack of exposure mm. is the thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I quite yes. agree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, this is not the proper place to discuss how to raise the level of English, but I think it would be a great step forward mm -hmm. if we had more native speakers teaching in our English departments. Oh, uh, really? That's an interesting mm -hmm. idea. Mm -hmm. And finally, I think there is too much interest in the 19th century writers. 
Of course, I do not deny that they offer interesting subjects for our studies. But when I see so many students stopping there and failing to go beyond, mm -hmm. uh, I cannot help feeling that there is something wrong. Ah. In short, I think it is necessary for us to foster the spirit of adventure in English studies in Japan. Mm. I feel pretty much the same yeah. way. Well, yeah. Professor Yuasa, uh, what do we really derive um, from translation of, say, either English or Japanese literature? Uh, some people may be wondering if translation is really necessary. If we can read everything in the original language, then uh, we don't need that. So, uh, do you have any comments on this? Well, this is a very difficult question to answer. I'm not sure whether I can defend myself. <laughs> But uh, let me recall the story of the Tower of Babel in the Bible. Uh -huh. The confusion of languages was given to mankind as a punishment for its pride. Oh, I think that's a wonderful <laughs> allegory. <laughs> uh, translation is an attempt to remedy this situation. Uh -huh. So long as we have the confusion of languages with us, we must continue to translate in order to maintain the unity of mankind. Hmm. Besides, a translation is an act of interpretation, for every translator must convey an image of the original author. Yes. It is infinitely subtler than academic work, I think, mm -hmm. because it must, be, it must reproduce a work of art in its totality, mm -hmm. while academic work is often concerned with a single aspect. Mm -hmm. Finally, translation is a way of refreshing the literary tradition. Mm -hmm. T.S. Eliot says that every single work of art, newly produced, alters the order of existing works. Now, if that is right, translation, like the infusion of blood, invigorates the literary tradition of the language into which the work is translated. Mm, that's a wonderful simile, like the intrusion of, of, of mm -hmm. blood, the infusion of blood. I like that very much. Um, now, I know um, it's very difficult uh, to translate Japanese literature into English. I wonder, in your opinion, what are some of the most difficult things about translation um, from Japanese to English and vice versa as well? The most difficult thing, in my opinion, is to convey deep meanings that lie behind words and images. Mm -hmm. In translating haiku, for example, conveying yoin, a deep emotional echoes that keep vibrating in our minds long after we finish reading a poem is most difficult. Mm -hmm. Well, Professor Yurasa, but it, it still seems to be nearly impossible to uh, translate uh, uh, Japanese uh, literature, particularly haiku, uh, into uh, English. And uh, could you uh, illustrate Yes, let me give an example. Uh, my translation of that famous poem by Basho on a frog jumping into the water uh, runs like this. Mm -hmm. Breaking the silence of an ancient pond, a frog jumped into water. A deep resonance. Ah, mm -hmm. that's The deep true. resonance seems to be the key. Yes, it does, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, I've been criticized for saying too much uh, in this uh, translation. And I accept that criticism. Mm -hmm. However, if I had said the sound of water instead of a deep resonance, mm -hmm. I would have stopped on the level of words. Mm -hmm. And if I had said something like splash or plop, that would have meant stopping on the level of physical sound and not going beyond it at all. Ah, I see. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, of course, if you say too much, you run the risk of becoming too obvious. And uh, isn't interpretation rather a personal thing as well? Yes, it is personal. And that is why every age has to produce its own translation. Homer has been translated many times, but a future age has to produce its own translation again. Ah, yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Professor, uh, I'm sure uh, there are thousands of uh, students uh, who are interested in the study of Japanese literature, uh, and particularly uh, that of uh, poetry. Uh, how uh, have your books so far been accepted uh, by those uh, students of uh, Japanese literature, or even the, the people of general interest? I think my translations have been favorably received, Hmm, by experts good. and general readers, if mm -hmm. I may say so. Yes. I am not a careful follower of reviews, but uh, according to the list provided by uh, a reviewer, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. in Monumenta Nipponica, my translation of Basho was favorably reviewed by many critics. Hmm. For example, by James Kirkup in the Japan Quarterly. Ah, yes. Yes, he's very well. I remember that, yes. My translation of Issa remains in print even today, more than 20 years after its first appearance. My word. Oh, mm. nice. And my recent translation of Ryokan will be reviewed soon in the Cambridge Review. And, um, well, to change the subjects just very slightly, Professor, for how long have you been teaching at Hiroshima University? Well, I've been teaching at Hiroshima University for more than 20 years now. My word, that's a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, people tend to believe that uh, every good thing should start in Tokyo. But uh, knowing that you were initiated into your professional career in Hiroshima and that you've been extremely successful, it's really encouraging to note that a successful career can start uh, anywhere. We're very happy to be able to meet you down in Hiroshima, too. It's a great pleasure for us to be here. Um, well, Professor, about your favorite authors, uh, both in Japanese and English literature, could you tell us a little about them in uh, comparative terms? Well, uh, before answering your question, I'm tempted to say that Hiroshima has all the charms of a metropolis, but uh, very few of its vices. Uh -huh. mm. My wife does not share this view with me, oh. however... She thinks Komoro, her native town in Nagano Prefecture, much better than Hiroshima. How oh, does she? Now, uh, about my favorite authors, mm -hmm. instead of giving you a long list, I'll give you just a few names in pairs. Issa and Dan, Basho and Frost, Ryokan and Hopkins. Mm -hmm. I think these two writers uh, in each of these pairs have some qualities in common. The real trouble with me is that uh, I find it difficult to name the authors whom I positively dislike. Mm -hmm. Ah, my word. Well, you know, I'd like to ask you a, a personal question, if you don't mind, Professor. Um, to get away, really, from your speciality, um, I'm interested in your opinions on uh, two authors who are quite popular here in Japan, I think, Somerset Maugham and Graham Greene. How do you feel about these two? Well, my knowledge of uh, contemporary literature is very limited. But I think uh, Graham Greene is a writer of a higher order yes. than Somerset Maugham. Uh -huh. Maugham, I think, is a great technician, a great storyteller. Mm -hmm. But uh, Greene is more profound in his thoughts. Uh -huh. For example, he probes very deeply into the meaning of human existence yes, in The does. Power and the Glory. That's right. Yes, yes, that's a wonderful book. And I wonder if you've ever had any contemporary writers at Hiroshima University. Uh, we had uh, Iris Murdoch uh, visiting oh. us some years ago. Oh, How interesting. Exciting, yes. Uh, what, what, what was she doing at the university? Lecturing? Uh, yes. She came here with her husband, Professor John Bailey. Ah. And uh, she gave a lecture on her philosophical ideas at the university, which I had to translate into Japanese on the spot. Oh, what a difficult, difficult job. Yes, and how, how was the lecture accepted, Professor? Well, her lecture was extremely difficult, mm. but uh, many of us were inspired by it. Mm hmm I took her to Miyajima. We had a most enjoyable talk over a cup of sake at the tea house there. Oh, hello. Oh, nice. Yes, and are you still in touch with her, Professor? Yes, we still correspond. In fact, I had a letter from her not long ago ah. in which she, uh, she thanked me for my translation of Yokan and said she liked it very much. Ah, very, very interesting. Well, Professor Yasa, we certainly wish we had more time to talk with you. But thank you very much indeed for coming today, and I'm sure our listeners benefited very greatly from your interesting and enlightening talk. Precisely, and thank you again, and everyone. This concludes today's guest hour. So long till next month. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. ゲストは湯浅信之さんでした。英語会話を終わります。<音楽>